Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofinet the Babbling Belgian and welcome to Destiny 2 Adventure Time. Um, full disclosure before we start, as you can see, I am, well, you might have noticed it, I'm not playing with the same character I did as in the previous episode. The problem I had is that I recorded the first four episodes, there goes a public event, I recorded the first four episodes on my Titan, but I got a corrupted audio file from my commentary, which means that, uh, well, aside from the first episode, everything else sounded like crap. Um, and you can only play adventures uh, once, as far as I know, well, just once in, in the world, which meant that I had to find some other way of doing this. So now. I'm playing with my hunter character. I'm gonna quickly show you this lovely fellow. It's the character I started out with, so it's uh, max level. I can be max level if I want to. So uh, as for weapons, we're using Nameless Midnight, a uh, scout rifle with explosive bullets, then Sunshot, which allows, uh, well, enemies that die will be exploded. And then of course, a lovely sword, which is uh, gonna be coming in handy, I think. So I turned off the HUD, because the game keeps reminding me of that. I turned off the HUD because I think that might be a bit more uh, lovely, because this game is really beautiful, so this allows you to uh, appreciate its beauty. I know everything I need to know, I don't even need the HUD. Actually, the scout rifle I have equip equipped actually shows how many rounds I still have in the chamber. So that's uh, the reason why I'm now currently using my Hunter. I am going to go back to the Titan after I re-recorded uh, the next three episodes. Which also means to have uh, to fully disclose everything here, of course, that um, the next three episodes, the next three adventures, I will have experienced already since I recorded them with my Titan, which kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. But hey, I'll try to uh, talk you guys through it as much as I can. So, the adventure we're gonna do today is called. Uh, well, I don't actually see that right now. Uh, I think it's called a frame job. So uh, let's activate it. I think it's activating. Yeah, there we go. Ah, thanks for checking in, you two. We've had our fill of Red Legion patrols and fallen raids. We could use a spot of help with both. A glimmer mighty. Shut them down. Okay, so Ooh, that's a I accidentally started off with this public event here. See if you can track down a fallen comms terminal. Dev's got an idea that's crazy enough to work. Ah, uh, it's difficult for the young to recognize the wisdom of experience. It's actually really confusing because to play without a hut because I can't differentiate these uh, fellow guardians with the rest of the enemies here. That seems like a big enemy. I'm just going to take out this public event while we're at it, but we need to find a fallen comps terminal for uh, Devrim, who's up there in the tower, by the way. I'm actually, actually paying him a visit to, you know, how it, he looks. It's actually annoying to try and aim without the radical in the center of the screen. But it is helping. It is helping. Okay, there they go. And I leveled up. There we go. Public event completed. You some for yourself, you know. So you know what? Now that we're at it, just let's go uh, pay a visit to Devrim so you guys can uh, well capture an idea of how he looks. I already edited the first episode, so I went with those little uh, funny heads to show you guys who's talking at which point, but it might not hurt to show you the character in the flesh. So this guy here is Devrim. So a uh, lovely British uh, person up here in the tower. The church tower, Speaking and there he is. Look at his lovely face. Yeah, this is the the gentleman sniper, as is uh, described here. Devrim K holds fast in the wilds of the European so, so. dead zone, which is, of course, where we're still at. Return to the setting screen to restore the hut opacity. You know what? I'm just experimenting with this. I'm gonna see if I can't find any other option for the hut. Give me a second. Well, the only thing I can do is just change the opacity. Which means that that is not going to really help us all that much. Well, maybe it's going to... Because I need the, the HUD to know where I need to go. Because otherwise this is going to be really hard. Um, so yeah, let's go find that uh, Fallen Terminal. Oh, the Fallen Terminal is right here. I was just looking at it. Uh, access the Fallen Network. Here we go. 
Excellent. What say you use your access to prepare a broadcast in Fallen speak? I've been meaning to put this Cabal communications cipher to use. The Red Legion fighting the Fallen for a change. Great idea. I can extract archived audio transmissions from any Fallen in the area. So if you're not following the conversation completely here, we're gonna try to ambush the Cabal by letting the Fallen, well not really the Fallen, but us, uh, fake a communication uh, between the Fallen and the Cabal so they will be challenged to taking out some Fallen. But of course we will be waiting over there. So to be able to do that we need to collect some uh, voice fragments which is just... Uh, well, we're gonna do that by just killing a lots of Fallen, as we always. It's kind of the way that Guardians fix stuff. By just food shooting a lot of uh, enemies in the face. And as you can see, stuff is exploding because of uh, Sunshot. That's five, and I think there was, yeah, a bit of dusk light over here, which I can give to um, Devrim if I want to. Hello. There we go. So that's why the uh, the adventure is, of course, called a frame job. Convincing fallen impression. Don't mention accents around Dev unless you want a day long lecture about city dialects. Meantime, best sight line to Red Legion air support is the cliffside where you and I set up that refugee beacon. No one appreciates the finer things anymore. So we need to go back to a place to the top of the mountain where we set up the beacon for uh, Hawthorne since she's. Uh, well, that's been... it's something from the main quest that you do pretty much early on. Uh, before we can actually go back to uh, Zavala and the like. Um, which I means that we need we to, go to go back, back through the mines. The mines. There we go. Chin up, you two. Good news. You'll be able to use a fallen teleporter to reach the top. And bad news. They've wired the place to explode. So... So, this is really cool because they kind of changed the level to be completely booby-trapped. Uh, which makes this place really interesting to go around. Let's blow that all up so they die. Um, the first time I played this, I tried to be very careful that I don't trip anything. I'm going to do that again, of course. If I run a deep scan of the tunnels, we can borrow all these traps and explosives. And put them to good use, sowing chaos between your enemies. A lovely idea. So we're gonna try and use the explosives against the Cabal. So since um, enemies explode if I use Sunshot, I'm just gonna use Nameless Midnight from now. And take out the enemies that way with the scout rifle. There's a bit of a higher ground here. Uh, ooh, there's a Servitor. Was that there the first time? I can't really remember. Uh oh. Thought I had an explosive there. So I'm gonna limit my usage of explosives for now. I think there's one more... Yeah, there he is. Shot at him already. So let's scan the explosives over there in the middle. So the, the joke about uh, not mentioning accents to Devrim is of course referring to the fact that he's British. Uh, let's scan the place. Which means, because it's not just scanning that we're gonna do. There we go. Got it. Now I can transmit these horribly dangerous explosives wherever we need. And there they go. All the explosives are gone because we teleported them to. I don't actually know. Because um, they use the word transmit to just transport stuff digitally, but I don't know if that's just stored inside of the ghost or not. Because, yeah, because we can also transmit through this teleporter, so here we go. Which is gonna put us right on top of the mountain immediately. Look at that. Look at that view. A lovely view of the shard where you get your powers again. And then down there is... I'm not actually sure. Um, you can see this from far away. There's like an opening in the mountain. And a cannon over there. So I think it's a way for ships to leave. That's why they made an opening in the mountain, which seems really, really, not really efficient, but yeah. Let's go back up here, because this is an area that you normally can't really access again, uh, aside from that single mission. So we need to clear out the Fallen here so we can prepare an ambush for the Cabal we just set up. An 
and I'm pretty clear to use explosives and the like again. So let's use the sword. A later addition to Destiny, the swords are really cool because they allow you to just get up close and personal. They are heavy weapons, so uh, ammo for them. Yeah, swords have ammo in Destiny. Uh, it's sparse, but yeah, they do a lot of damage if used properly. So there we go, let's scan again. Great work. Broadcasting the message now. I decided to go with a House of Devils accent. Remember them? Of course we remember them. Ah, House of Devils, eh? You know the most interesting thing about their pronunciation? Actually, Devrim, let's keep the channel clear. You know, to uh, make sure there's no interference during the transmat. A lot of big red ships headed your way. Whatever you said, it got their attention. I told them that Gaul ran away and cried when we retook the city. Big, ugly cry. Ah, uh, I do so love unconventional warfare. I'd be on the lookout for drop pods if I were you. So, because of the explosive we just set up, most of the enemies just died. Like that. And it's just funny. It's just funny to see happen. Um, the House of Devils they mentioned is the first fallen clan we meet in Destiny 1. Which are uh, real sons of bitches. I feel like the Scions are pretty much invulnerable for the explosives. I'm just gonna kill them and let the... Yeah, those guys just blow up everything. <laughs> Look at that, that's glorious. There's one more gladiator hiding behind some stuff there. Oh, I think, yeah, was another uh, scion over there. So the House of Devils is the first fallen house you come across and you fight uh, their leader in uh, the first strike actually as well. There's the next batch. They won't take long to uh, explode, I think. I think... Oh, there's one more boss over there. Drosk the Crushing Fist. Goodbye. Okay. He didn't crush much there, but... Is that it? Oh no, there's one more alive there. Let's use my super on him. There we go. I could shoot more of those. Because I'm uh, a night stalker that can set traps like that. Explosions all the way back here. I bet it was quite a show. Which means the Fallen and Red Legion heard it too. We'll let them shoot at each other for a while and clean up whatever's left. Great work. So, because the Cabal reacted to um, well a challenge from the Fallen, as they might think, they uh, don't know that we are responsible for killing pretty much every Cabal that showed up. And now there should be a little bit of a fight between the Fallen and the Cabal, allowing them to tin each other out, which of course works in our favor. So that's uh, the frame job done. Uh, again, I played this already, of course, so that's why uh, the commentary is a bit more... How would I say, not reactive to what happens, because I really I really liked what they did with this level, so just setting up those explosives, because it's not something that happens in the rest of the game. But uh, yeah, so that's going to be the what's going to happen in the next two episodes as well. I'm going to play with the Hunter, and I'm going to have played the Adventures, but after episode 4, everything should be back to normal. So thank you guys enormously for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again next time in Adventure Time. Goodbye!